Hi there, welcome to Escape the Prison Matrix. My name's Alan Stockdale, uh, and this is my first show. And what, what we're going to talk about today is I just don't know because I've got a special guest coming along, and his name's Mr. Paul Massey. And I'll tell you a little bit about him. Uh, I came across him about seven or eight years ago when we used to do a bit of online marketing. And it soon became very apparent that this man was very, very knowledgeable on lots of subjects. I must admit, it blew my head off with most of them. Didn't really understand 90% of it, what he was telling me, but the 10% I did understand got me interested. And I have to admit, it was like leading a horse to water. I had a look at the river, thought, hmm, looks a little tasty. Had a little drink, and I kept coming back for more, coming back for more. And over the probably two years, I think I gradually started to awake, and all of a sudden, bang. It seemed to happen all at once. I was like a sponge buying uh, David Icke books and all this information started to come in and Paul was always there, 10 steps ahead of me, uh, bringing me new information. And as, it's, as time's gone by, we seem to have, well, I seem to have caught him up, let's say, if you want to call it that. Uh, and when I was seem to be on, but basically I'll ring him up and he'll be watching the same video what I'm just about to tell him about. So the synchronicity is amazing. So I just wanted to, Bring him on board now because he's going to be my co host. So, uh, hello, Mr. Paul, are you there? Uh, typically in prose, he is, yes. Alan, um, wow, I couldn't have said it better. It's, <laughs> it's fantastic to hear what you've just um, parlayed as an introduction to all our brothers and sisters out there who are going to come across this. Uh, yeah, that's about the nature of the game. Um, we're in as the title of the show suggests it is a prison matrix it's twofold one's the system on the planet earth that we're dealing with you name it from pharmaceuticals to natural remedies to the banking system to your straw man some of you may know not not know that term yet and then if you manage to go and deal with this matrix on the apparent outside world of this paradigm and if you manage to fathom that and deal with it and smooth it out and be in non-resistance to that game because you get it and you love it, you've then got the second prison matrix, which is another game altogether, and that's the mind, your thought process that you're attached to in identification, in illusion of there being anything outside of you. Am I going too far again, Alan? No, no, no. <laughs> no you just carry on with the flow. I'm enjoying it. Carry on. Yeah. So, um... In retrospect, yeah, I kind of met Alan Stockdale um, somewhere about six six to seven years ago from 2014 as we are now. I believe I was also chasing the Fandango dream of <laughs> making £5,000 a week, clicking a few buttons online. Um, but I, I'd got a certain brewing, if we can use that term collectively enough, a brewing a frustration at what I was seeing in the world. And not so much just what I was seeing, but what I then learnt in practical application, which completely and utterly consolidated this knowing and understanding of, let me say, the vast majority of the, of the characters, the world's population being fast asleep. I came to, I came to experience that firsthand in a thousand different yeah, paradigms yeah. and characters and moments of meeting everyone from a wizard of a professor of a university somewhere to Joe Bloggs on the streets, whatever. In conversations, I realised, oh my God, this is deep, this is deep, this is deep. There's one, and, Paul, there's one yeah. thing what I found out, though, along the way, I, I look back at myself now and you, is we, even though when we was awakening, like I said, you was always a few steps ahead of me in those days, we still was trapped in that paradigm of needing the money got to be successful we need to get abroad you wanted to move to thailand didn't you need this illusional x amount of money and i couldn't see that i was trapped in that that that's the part of the matrix isn't it where you're trapped in that you've got to earn the money you must provide for this and it took me all these years until very recently in fact a couple of months ago really to really finally get myself out of that 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 need that that sort of trap of it how, how about yourself how did you find that oh i love it i love it i love it i just love the questions and the direction this is going because every time i'll just come back to you with nothing but a formulated truth serum of my natural response and it goes something like this um in 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 response and recognition to what you said just said and what you've asked 
uh, I think um, my initial response to that is that I can't remember the name of the character. He's possibly a philosopher, possibly by the name of Goethe. I don't know how to pronounce it. G-O-E-T-H-E, one of those, or, or Nietzsche, or one of them. I think it was Nietzsche. You're familiar with that name, Nietzsche? Uh, yes, I am. N-I-E-T-Z-C-H-E something, Czechoslovakian possibly, don't quote me, philosopher. And he said it well. And, and there's a purpose which you'll get in five seconds once I say this to me saying this. None is more hopelessly enslaved than he who thinks he's free. Yeah. So in recognition of your particular point, sir, that so many years ago, da da da, and I was behind you, and now I feel it. When we feel that we're free of any of this, just take that as a kick up the arse reminder that you're not. <laughs> the very fact that your very thoughts are actually configuring that in relationship to an idiom, a concept that we've just entertained. We're, we're, we're on the game. We're waking up. That's all. We're no more yeah, than that. Yeah, yeah, we're aware of certain paradigms. We're aware of things that we can provide and uh, express and present with elements of truth in it that only somebody else who gets that will notice it but we're, we're waking up we're waking up we're still very attached to our thought stream system so yeah i don't know if that answers what you were saying yes yes it does yeah it does but i think um for, for me personally the the realization about I, the want let's say of always needing to be successful and always wanting that to, to, to get that success. For me, it, it went back from my childhood. I think always wanting to get my dad's approval and uh, praise. Failure. And I, yeah. I, think, I think that's what, I, and it's took me all this time to, to, as I started meditating and seeing my inner self and just sort of basically questioning why I am the way I am. And, it, and, and once I did that, the, 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 uh, the answers came to me. And I think with, with the help of the meditation and, and cutting out of the fluoride, I don't use toothpaste no more. I never, I don't ever use any deodorants, any shower gels. I don't put no chemicals on me. Uh, I'm in the process of uh, starting drinking distilled water, which is going to hopefully get rid of all the toxins, which will help my pineal gland to open up more and more. And I'm finding the more I'm doing this, the more meditation I'm doing, the more I'm connecting to Gaia, which is the spirit of the earth, the more it's opening me up and I'm seeing myself in a different light in a um well, I don't know how to explain it as if I'm seeing myself from another galaxy looking at myself as a little pinprick on a little planet and I just and but yeah I realize I am that vastness I am that planet I am that universe I am the consciousness we're all it we're all it together and it's starting starting to get through to my thick northern head that that's what it's all about <laughs> that's the way uh, I put uh, it <laughs> uh, in, in beautiful um, appreciation recognition I can <laughs> easily jump in and say those those words my thick northern head I, okay, I, that, I said that uh, Paul because I knew yeah, you were going to jump absolutely. on it absolutely <laughs> yeah, and that's that's just an example. You know, we need to bring this awareness and bring these examples to light. You know, just another example of a brainwashed reality. Yeah. I'm the same. I relate to everything you say, Alan. I, I, my first experience that made me start questioning reality would have been at about eight years old in the junior school at school when I looked around myself in a nanosecond of a one-minute, 30-second um realization that if you put it down into print you could have filled four or five a4 pages yeah. that all happened in the mind high speed thought process took about 12 seconds for me to completely completely accept and let go and completely surrender to the the fact that i couldn't I couldn't even express or explain this to anyone in life at that time at eight years old. Not to my family, friends, teachers, nothing, because I didn't know how to explain it. But I just accepted and realised at eight years old, oh my fuck, there's something wrong in my head. I knew it. And that's my start of my journey. So in relation to where you're coming from, you know, there's um, it's not so much an adage that I can put words to, but it's a, a certain given in life, you know, in terms of you trying to relate to the percentage of characters on the planet at any one time who are waking up yeah. compared to those who are asleep. Um, you're looking at a small percentage and that small percentage is a direct, always proven without fail in every circle from psychology to psychiatry to social mechanics to whatever you have to hit a crisis you have to hit some sort of crisis yeah. that's going to make you ask that's, and and the initial and the initial first 
first turn, if you like, of your first experience, whether you were eight like me or 10 or 15 or whatever, it will always, without fail, inevitably be you self-projecting that, fuck, something wrong with me. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. It's a fact. It's a fact. Yeah. You know, and it's not at that age when you do realise this, you're not fighting a system saying, hey, they've all got me wrong. They don't understand me because of the very fact that you don't. You've just had this, you just had this canvas that is overwhelmingly um, proving and confirming that, listen, you don't fit in, you're wrong. Yeah. And yeah. at a young age, when you're formative, you're going to want to know what the fuck's going on here. I need to understand this because I can't speak to anyone yet who would. And the reason I couldn't, no fault of theirs, I don't have any structure or platform to make sense of it to explain to another. Yeah. So you go along your formative years growing and relating and reflecting you against this apparent outside world. What is it that's wrong with me? And in whoa, doing whoa. that, you'll what find them all did the same. That, yeah. at that point in yes, your please. life, uh -huh. do you feel if you, let's say that you had a, a mum and dad what was, like we are now, Right. I mean, we know what's what. <laughs> Do you yeah. think that? I know that's not the journey you chose yet, but apart from that, no, it is. It is. Side, it's it's what do you it think it would have been like for you if you'd, been, if you'd have been with parents or a brother or something that could show you exactly what you were feeling is the right way to go? What of a spiritual understanding? Yes, you mean? Yes. Yes. Parents of a spiritual yes. nature understood this composite yes, of yes. death. Of, the great question irony is that if I said it doesn't matter a twiddly because it's just another uh, potential, if that had happened, yeah, we wouldn't be sitting here talking right now. If, if I can come to the yeah. full conclusion, simple as that, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And that's, I don't know what the word is in the right English language, an ideology, utopian thought form, I don't know, but I accept that that, that wasn't what's here now, what yeah. we're experiencing. So, yeah, but it's lovely. Yeah, it feels good. It's like and ideology and stuff but um ideologies are also either you know hindrances or or exponential gateways for, for you to go further i suppose yeah. I, hope, I hope people realize what's listening to this that we are just two ordinary guys that are just doing this sort of radio show just to try and what and if they don't yeah sorry and what if they don't what if they don't Resonate you said, I hope that people realise. I just pick up. You've got to be aware of me, Alan. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I heard, I heard you pouring something. I thought you were going to start talking, so I stopped myself. Uh, Filling up water, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but basically what I'm saying is, we, what I'm trying to say is, we're just to the people that's listening to this, we are just two ordinary guys who are trying to just express our views for other people to listen to, uh, and hopefully it will bring some resonance with you and maybe go out there and start you to investigate things on YouTube yourself, just like me and you did. And I'm just trying to say that's what we're trying to do for people. We're not, it's not some grand, uh, we want to be famous <laughs> doing internet radio, talking to ourselves like no doubt we are at the moment. Um, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to put that across to people. Of course I know what you mean, Alan. I'm trying to say, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. I understand what you mean, because what you're really trying to say is that we're too... Um, Please, please, let me let me say this. We've got fuck all to do with two normal people. There, there doesn't exist any such thing as a normal person, yeah. even though the biggest illusory concept that's driving everyone to stay fast asleep is this desperate need to be seen as normal by others. Yeah, Get away yeah, from yeah, that, yeah, everybody. Yeah. There is no normality. It doesn't work. It's not a smart place to be. But um, in terms of what we're doing, we're two characters. We're two expressions of infinite consciousness. Yeah. Currently currently experiencing the human condition in physical form in the third dimension who have learned sufficient or should i say rather than learned because that means you can go and read a book and think you know something and not the case we've realized i love the word real eyes real eyes real, real some eye, might say eye. some might say the pineal gland, the third eye yeah. real eye anyway we've realized and in our earlier days when we were juvenile to this game in terms of our complicit understanding or not we would say we've realized there's something abhorrently wrong and here's the fact of the matter here's the truth there's nothing wrong we're just not at a stage evolutionary in the in the human condition to recognize perfection in everything 
and I could go controversial with that phrase, but I won't at the moment. Yeah, we'll come yeah. back to that at a later stage. Okay. But you and I are two characters waking up who are so impassioned about the truth that we have realized, not believed, not opinionated, not th but realized is 100% a true paradigm. We've come to a place where we just feel naturally impulsed and impelled and compelled or whatever the word yeah. to help our brothers and sisters because I said it in the movie, The Matrix, it's one clever yeah. movie yeah, it is. It and is. a lot of people are waking up to that. We are in a holographic universe, whatever. We are functioning through a tool known as perception, which is very young, very unmature, immature. It hasn't developed too far yet other than for us to be here. And if you can bring about that tool up to the place where you can realize that there is perfection in everything, in the dog shit on the floor. This year for what's extremely important on this point. Um, Sega. Sega. I need to interject with you on that Good. point you're making Good. now. And it's very, very important for, for me. It's something Lovely. that I, I've come to realise. We did speak about it uh, a few weeks ago, about yep. uh, the Cameron Day version. There's uh, a guy what I listen to, uh, and there's quite a few other people. Uh, Michelle Walling, she, she talks about the same sort of stuff. Um, her, her boyfriend, Mr. Prescott, I think his name is. Uh, anyway, basically, what, what they're talking about is when you're saying about the beauty in everything, that opinion used to resonate no, with me. I'm not. I'm yes. not. No, no, not. no. Let me, let me finish, Bob. Let me get. Let I'm me, using words, Alan. It's I know, important. I know, I know. You I said just, beauty. I, wanna... I said perfection. Exactly. We've got to be clear with people, yeah. otherwise, they get confused. Please. Yeah, I know, but I'm just trying to explain something I know you that's are. very important to me. And I know, but you asked really for this. To, to, to get across because it's one of the biggest reasons why I think personally myself I wanted to do these broadcasts and it was actually to yeah. sort of bring the knowledge to people that um, this existence what we're in now when when I mean whoever's listening to this whatever your beliefs are about the afterlife let's say from a religious point of view yeah. you think you're going to die you think you're going to go to heaven there's going to be an angel giving you a life review there's the yeah. uh, and, and all, on all that side of it and then you're going to come back to earth then to re readdress your karma I personally believe and I'm not the only person that believes this I think that is another matrix in this matrix I think there's a matrix on the earth in the 3D and I think there's a matrix in the 4 4D and I think when you go back to those places, I think it's these uh, entities what are there, they're, they're making deals with you. Right, you need to go back to Earth and you need to suffer this. What's that? How about being a victim of, of rape as a child? And that'll learn you a lesson all the way through your life of what it's like to have that experience. But in reality, the only reason they're doing that to, to, to people, to, to, to souls, is so they can feed off the negativity of, of the situation they're going through all their life. So I think it's a big, massive con. All these extreme... I'm not saying that all... I'm not, but don't get me wrong. People die, obviously. People have accidents and want the experience of existence, let's say, as a cripple, because they may have chose to if they've come from a higher realm. But these people that get trapped in this 5, 4D area, what they think is the afterlife, but it's not. It's just an astral plane where they believe they're in like a garden of Eden or whatever you want to call it. Then they make these deals to come back to Earth. And some of these deals are the, are the atrocities we see around the world in, in vast amounts. And I think it's just for these entities to feed their energy off. Now, this may be well above what somebody is listening to on this program, but it's something I feel extremely strong about because it, 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 it encompasses all the things what's happening on this Earth and it makes sense of all the suffering and why it's there. Um, and, and, and these sides in this in this reality, the fourth D, these good and bad. So you've got your, you've got your, all your Satanists on Earth. They go to a reality where they die. What's got like these bad demons, so to speak? And then you've got your Christians. What go to see God and, and 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 all the angels? But in reality, they're all fake. They're all actually beings like archonic beings. What are feeding off both sides of it? So I just wanted to interject on that point you was making about the beauty of. This and that. When we had that conversation a few weeks ago, I, I resonated with that very, very deeply. But as I've come, this new knowledge has come to me, to, for me personally, from my personal point of view, it, that, that resonates with me a lot higher. So I just wanted to say those. A big speech from Alan Stockdale. Just naturally, it's all you'll ever get from me, I suppose, is um, attention on particular 
uh, concepts or subjects that you might be addressing and bringing to the table. And why I say this is, as and when you're speaking naturally and you're referring and presenting a particular, let's say, opinion, thought, belief, or knowledge stream, um, I will never be free of this, being able to not, in the moment, adjudicate whether what he's just said is a belief, what he's just said is a realisation or a truth or knowledge, or what he's just posited was an opinion so far. Yeah. And yeah. so on that note of what you're saying, you know, about Christians, you know, you, you, you've, you've, um, you've actually shared an opinion at the moment about everyone according to their particular paradigm of thought system, attachment, belief system to whatever. You know, your Christians will go and experience this afterlife, um, whether it's this or that, heaven or hell. All of these suggestions or beliefs or whatever are just that. They're not knowledge. They're only beliefs, you know, so it's fair to say if you've got an understanding, a little comprehension of the biblical platform in life and what it's addressing and many other religions similarly from Judaism and Islam or whatever, you've got this idea of a creator and you're on this planet as a life and based upon your decisions and choices you made, there's going to be a point where the body dies and you're in front of an adjudicator who judges whether you're going to come back and serve some more and suffer some more and whether that adjudicator could be Anu or whoever we're coming across who might be controlling the whole game. Yeah. All of this, because of this beautiful place when we were born, which was amnesia, there was a purpose to us forgetting the source we came from. Because we're doing the waking up game, we're riddled, we're, we're, we're really held down by beliefs. And the only way to shatter a belief is through realisation. And through the aspect of realisation, that's the only way that any, any belief ever transmutes into knowledge. You, you're following so in terms of what's going on the afterlife, you and I hold beliefs. We have understandings, opinions, yeah. beliefs and attachments that, yeah, I get that. I've read it so many times in so many spiritual contexts that that must be the case. But my passion, Alan, which is why we're here, is truth. And so I'm very, very quick to pick myself up and myself includes every other brother and sister on the planet, funnily, as I'm coming through that awakening. So I'm so quick to pick up the first sense, the first <laughs> sniff I have that's telling me I'm currently um, sharing or pulling apart or analysing a belief because knowledge, when shared, requires no analysis. It's to, it just is. It's an absolute yeah, what's going on? What would you suggest, oh, suggest. Paul, from um, what you're saying about realization and belief? How 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 have you gone from belief to realization? Then, I mean, for me personally, I, it's like I'm listening to my higher self. It's like because I'm, I'm connected with my higher self. It's it's a knowing. It's 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 a knowing inside, but I can knowledge what just resonates. This is true. Now, for me, so for my well, the way I'm experiencing this reality is. That feels like me. That is a realisation for me. How, how does it work for you? Well, to answer you again, to give you some feedback and respond to that accordingly, um, I would say, yeah, guess what? That's where we're at. And if you for one second assume that to work this out from a head-centred energy computer system known as the brain and the mind, it's a male energy, it's in the head, it's a different level. It's what we call intellect. It has very little in, com in comparison with the word intelligence on this level. We're talking about the difference between heart-centered intelligence and head-centered intellect. You're asking how, how, how did it work for you to go from belief to realization? Well, I've been, I suppose, 20 years now focusing on, if I say, the, the subject of perception, I suppose, which that would fall into. I've spent 20 years 
trying to make sense of this and I've done it from a head-centered reality so my intellect has done what it can to make sense of all this and from that perspective I can give you a you know a rhetorical deliberation and a def definition in in verbosity with words of the English language coming from the intellect to explain that however that's as futile you know as as trying to boil an egg in the North Atlantic <laughs> in relativity because for you to know and recognize the difference between everything you have believed if you currently believe then everything you currently believe that you shouldn't attach to that you want another to understand this is where it starts to get wobbly <laughs> This is where the matrix really starts to wobble because you're trying to prove something based on the dynamics of language, belief, intellect. Are you with me? Yeah. You're trying to prove what you currently know? No. What you currently believe. And and the point the point of transition, if you like, which I'd say isn't is very rarely in a second, an hour, a day, a week or a month. Or even a year, the point at which you're, you are able to naturally let go of your what seems like a pressurized need to explain to another what you believe or how you see it, that very point of transition is the point at which knowledge enters the game. Are you with me? Yeah. So for you to want to need to, you know, listen, this is how I've got it, mate. Listen, Alan, this is how I understand it. When we say that to someone, what we're doing is we're fishing. We're fishing for uh, recognition, confirmation that I've got it right. And this is all head. This is all head mechanics nature. And what I'm trying to... It's not always easy, this isn't, because we're limited with an English language here. What I'm trying to point out is I've personally recognised that the point in which... And let's not say the point, because that really fine-tunes it to this little time and space moment, but... The time where you are in full realisation or starting to realise, oh my shoot, that's so true, you'll find that those moments, those particular realisations, you now try and explain that with the English language and the intellect and the head oh, for another oh. to get it. And if you're trying to explain it to that other for them to get it um, with any kind of passion whereby them disagreeing riles you, that's great, because all that's showing you, mirror reflection, is just telling you where you're at. You're currently still drawn, you're still head-related, head yeah. and all of this is a word that is possibly, I'd have to say, in 42 years, what I'd call the most misunderstood term in English language, and in every language it's got its own version, that's called ego. Um, and so to know and understand and recognize what is ego, what is its fundamental nature, what part, what aspect of my experience am I currently fundamentally aware of to say that part of me is ego, but this part isn't. That's ego talking. It's a monkey. It's a monkey to recognize. You've got to be so sharp. And then you can go to a, you can get so far in being so sharp because being so sharp is, again, an intellectual function. The peace of the heart, the loving, intelligent peace of the heart. The heart's, the heart's ability is called knowing. The heart is what knows. The head rarely knows. This is my opinion. I'll, I'll, I'll clear that up. This is my opinion at the moment. The heart is what knows. The heart is the home of realization. But we're not quite yet so aware that the in intellectual, what we'd call intelligence of the brain and mind, working it all out. We're not aware of the division there, the difference, the, the palpable, tangible, expressionable difference between mind-centered working concepts out and the heart's no energy, just got it, just got it. Yeah. The heart yeah. knows that it's <laughs> intelligence. It's a female energy. We're all male-female energies, whether we're born with a dick or the other. We're all both either one way or the other in, in, in you know, in expression percentage wise, if that makes sense. So, so yeah, trying to work out, trying to understand, you know, all of this, 
experience and relationship that we're having to what we're calling reality, whether we call it the matrix, whatever. There's so many fundamental platforms that are so intrinsic in getting the whole game that no, we're going to have fun this life, but we'll have worked out a little bit. <laughs> you get me? Yeah. And we'll leave these yeah. bodies. And right now we have no real memory at the moment of what is to come. But we have a ton, a ton of very, very strong, very impassioned beliefs of what we think it's all about after life, conscious awareness, third dimension. And we'll go selling these to others with attachment so if the other person says no you're so right you're so right you're so right i get that that's so true we feel comforted yeah we feel patted on the back and and we'll say well, yeah the, the, the thing i've got it paul is if I, I'm, I'm listening to what you're telling me now and i'm starting to feel guilty about telling people because i'm thinking is it just me and my ego even though, I, even though yes. I, my heart tells me, it, I, I, you know, it's what I believe, not well, the word, sorry, not the word believe, I know, sorry, after listening to your yeah. sermon, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to word it a bit better, <laughs> yeah, I, I, my, my heart, Absolutely. I know that it's true, but yet I feel guilty so, now, because it might be me ego telling them. Well, that's because you're meant to, you're meant to have that little experience of feeling guilty, because if you don't have that experience, so feeling guilty, you can't get to the next stage. <laughs> You're with me. So it's all perfect. It's not like we're standing on Hyde Park Corner now with our two microphones trying to explain no, to the public week. that this is how the banking system works. <laughs> you need to know this. We're, we're a bit deeper than that. We're trying to say, listen, this is my understanding of perception-based reality and response to what appears to be an outside world. And in that world, we have a planet Earth, and it's called a third dimension. It's called space and time and all of this. We're trying to parlay and, and, and touch buttons, and we can only touch other buttons that will awaken others with absolute natural truth. And if guilt, feeling guilty, is a part of that for you to go through, that's fine. Don't knock it, because we have two, two worlds, don't we? Duality, and that applies to words. Guilty, shame, da -da -da, da 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 all of these fall into one world. And we try to cover that up. We feel we've done wrong. It's none of that, none of that. You can't do wrong in anything in life. You can only be, you can only wake up. And this is what we're playing at, I suppose. Oh, oh. Yeah. I'm still here. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that you just seem to finish all of a sudden. I thought you disappeared. Yeah. So, I mean, as, as a, just let's talk about this show for anybody who might be still listening to what we're talking about now, if we're not just talking to ourselves. What, um, so the listeners can actually hear what, how, the structure of what we're going to be pulling up over the next, well, however long, years, months, whatever. Um, because obviously this first show, yeah. we've been talking generally, speaking about our beliefs and whatever. Are we going to have some sort of structure for maybe they get the viewers to email us and uh, would you talk about yep. these things, talk about that, and we can, if it's in our sphere of knowledge, talk about that on a weekly basis? What, what do you reckon to that as an idea? Um, well, in answer to what you're asking, um, what is the subject, what is the structure, I would, I would help all of our... Um, purported listeners with one word alone and I think this will resonate with you the second I say it we're here to share truth right. what yes. we understand as truth okay. that truth might fall into 30 different categories that could be the straw man your birth certificate as a legal fiction that could be the financial structure that could be the powers that be uh, the Illuminati the Bilderbergs that could be food um, the difference between uh, nurturing living food organic and so forth so there are there are 20 odd subject yes. matter topics that we yes. can address yes. but they all come from one foundation and that's the word truth yeah. that's why we're here we want to share what we understand as the truth and um, and i think it's quite easy for other people to resonate and feel that somebody out to share truth uh with no with no um, agenda of uh, yeah, we, manipulating we've, we've and receiving links, another. Like, yeah. like Alex Jones has got on his show, no links to products, what he sells to make lots of money out of his... No, we're not here to make money. It's, we're not here to David Icke or to yeah. Alex Jones, no. Yeah. And their fellow players who are on the journey, they may 
they may well have gotten corrupted and become part of the puppet's agenda, so they use them accordingly, perhaps. We don't know. Don't know it seems know. that way, but I'm here to just share what I understand, what I've seen and realised. I, I have very little time or um, very little passion here to share my beliefs. Yeah. I don't care to want to share my beliefs. To me, it's more imperative that what I know is more fundamental to helping another. If I want to share my beliefs, then I can set up a radio show of likewise, so could you, of what we believe. And we will attract the very people who are still attached to beliefs yeah. driving their way and making their decisions in life. There's plenty of people doing that. I would like to share truths that I have realised. That's all, nothing more. What's, what, what's the biggest truth then for you then, Paul, that you've realised recently? You um, I, I, I laugh heartily at that question with absolute love to try to pinpoint the biggest truth, I suppose. Um, tough question. The biggest truth, I can't say there is one, um, but if I had to put the word, my word in response to the biggest truth... Um, then I think you will naturally concur and resonate immediately when I say it is the word illusion. <laughs> How's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Well, that, that, that illusion encompasses everything, doesn't it? Yeah. All of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, for me, for me personally, Paul, I think one of the biggest things, what I, the, the, the knowledge I came to, what, what changed the way I thought about just this reality experience, not the actual... We're being lied to on all levels, yeah. Well, well, for me, it was the, it was the commerce, it was the admiralty law, it was, it was all the fact that all this person that they give you, you know, they give you a, a bill for is like not you. And once I come to realise that the human being is different from the person what's on that bill in all these capital letters, that for me was one of the biggest things what set me on a journey because I thought, well, if that's the case, then uh, you, you look into it more and more and more and you see that it's all a con from, from the councils, from the government, from the, the police, everything they're all they're all just companies working for profit and you're the sucker what they're bleeding dry <laughs> and that was for me yeah. that, was, that was one of the biggest right. realizations in this matrix was was that and i think so, once, uh, once people get the head round that yeah. it opens up a door to many other things what oh yeah well if that were true yeah, yeah. maybe this is yeah. and they entertain that idea and yeah and so Alan, comes. yeah so so in fairness to bring a single word to what got you on the road of truth, and you've just explained it, uh, the Admiralty Law, commercial, your name and everything, what we can use there for any listeners is the word, the straw man. Yep. That was probably the tipping point which got you on this journey was the straw man. For those listeners who are not yet aware of that, you can type it into Google, the straw man. It's the illegal fiction you'll find on your birth certificate yeah. that claims to be you, and most people don't aren't you aware of how it isn't Paul, you. Paul, yep. what we'll do, when I put this show actually on our website, which is escapethematrix.com, by the way, I will put a link, to, I'll put the video on there, the straw man, that video off YouTube, the very, very good sort of 10 minute cartoon version, what explains it so, so simply. Uh, it, 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 for me, that's what really opened my eyes was that one video. Well, wow, wow. Yeah, so I'll, I will do that on the website so some listen, listeners can see exactly what you're talking about. And when you do that, I will come into the play and advise you very, very strongly, as your lawyer, Alan, that when you put that 10-minute video on, <laughs> right, when you put that 10-minute video on, you also accompany it with the one hour and 40, 50-minute Aussie guy, which I first came across, who gives a more fundamental, yes, deeper yes, understanding. And he, he really explains it clearly. So there's no depth there for people, anyone with half a modicum, to make sense of the difference between the words and and the word for. They're going to be able to follow this because that's a little intro, the 10-minute video, and then this... Anderson, whatever his name is, I think the Aussie guy with a black and white YouTube background graphics. Yeah. You need to bring that as well, so people have an option to go deeper. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, Does it, is that the one where he talks about the legalese side of things and the actual definitions of the words? And and, and is, is it that is that the one you're talking about? Where I couldn't say yes or no right now. I'd have to go and find the actual video footage to remember which it one is. it was. I listened to it about five times in my life, and he's just so clear, so clear in what he says. 
Um, I know that a 15-year-old, a 10-year-old, 15-year-old would be able to make sense of his basic rhetoric in what he's pointing out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, mate, I was just uh, uh, sorting out some software. I've just got a little thing saying, carry on recording, so I've pressed yes. <laughs> sorry about that. Are you really sorry about that? Uh, not at all, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got to bring truth to the table here, Alan. We need to so, show every kind of posit so, and, and yeah. moment of what people can recognise to. Well, when I'm Some people get this, yeah. When I'm talking to you, Paul, I have to try and... Um, mm, I have to choose my words a little bit more than when I'm talking to my wife let's say because you dissect everything I say so be very very careful <laughs> right then yeah. well we've been going now for 42 minutes Paul on a 42 show. years old Paul Massey that's right 42 <laughs> minutes and Alan is how old I am 46 46 so 42. just as I said 42 minutes with 4 seconds 42 yeah. plus 4 is 46 right yeah. that's fine that's fine yeah so far I'm I'm feeling this is all okay. This yes, is this yes. this is a slow becoming. This is we are we are opening and revealing a rabbit hole, which is nothing new. It's all over the internet today. There's a thousand talk show hosts, there's a thousand websites showing you the door. We're just doing something similar. We're trying to find our place in joining in this, in waking up and opening doors for people in their own time to see the truth themselves. So there's nothing we can do right or wrong in any of this. We can only just keep flowing. Yep, exactly. Yep. And let's just see, see what happens. I mean, end of the day, uh, we resonated with each other, didn't we, all those years ago? So I'm sure there's other people out there what will do the same, uh, resonating with whatever we're talking about. Right, so what do you want to do now, Paul? Do you want to uh, carry on to something else, or should we just wrap it up for this first one? So well, I'll leave it in your hands. You're the, you're the first guest, Paul, so... What do you want to do? Well, how can I answer you then, Alan? Can I answer you truthfully? Truthfully, yes. Right. So what was your question? What do I want to do now? What do you want to do now? Do you want to carry on? Go on to well, I'll tell you the yet? truth. Oh, go on. That's what I'm I don't want to do anything other than what is happening. <laughs> we're 43 minutes. We're being. We're going with the flow. If I let the mind mind come in now, it's going to try to work out well, what actually... What do we... Yeah. It's just yeah. what it is. We're going to try, we're going to attempt, I believe, to perhaps having introduced this um, and introduced it, you know, at the best we can at the moment. We might listen back to this and think, OK, we've got that out of the way. Now we can do a more formulated, structured introduction yeah. that may yeah. make more sense on the back of this. Um, but you're, I get the feeling I'm sensing you're possibly looking for uh, a direction of structure, as in content, subject matter of where we go from here with the well, next one. Get yeah, the, what, what I'm thinking, this is my uh, thought patterns at the moment. Um, yep. I mean, I'm on, I don't know your selfies, but I'm on scene.is, it's an alternative to Facebook, mm -hmm. and I've got, I've started a group on there called Escape the Prison Matrix, and at the moment I've got about 50 members on there, so what I intend to do is put this recording on there, so basically I'm sort of talking to you guys now, who, yep. who, are, who, are, who are members of, my, of the group I created, if you could message me with subjects you'd like to talk about, uh, answers you needed, Please do, and if you can send me some sort of uh, questions, what you want, I will then put them together. Me and you will then will try and address whatever they want to know. If we if we think we've got the knowledge to answer it, we'll attempt to answer it. Now, for me, that works quite well for the next episode. So I'll put this on scene.is on my group on there, Escape the Matrix, and let's yes. just see what happens. I think that's a very good idea, actually, Alan. I think the answer to what we were trying to find a solution to one minute, 42 seconds ago, funnily, has just appeared. <laughs> <laughs> Would you I'm agree, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, just for the record, if, if we could maybe just call this a going out point then. Yeah. Um, because when you put out this question on email that any subjects you want to talk about, then people are going to find a particular subject and it, uh, an impassioned topic they're particularly maybe struggling against, but also happen to be very intrigued as to the truth behind it all, beyond perception. Um, I'd probably say that, just for the record, when we say the prison matrix, as I said, um, I've already recognised a, a double facet to this, if you like, um, the one prison matrix, if I can conclude it um, sufficiently and 
short enough is the world outside of you forget that that's an illusion in itself there's nothing outside of you it's just very apparent but the world outside of you in other words the very machines and mechanics of this reality on planet earth 3d mechanics that are affecting everyone with its lies and its controlling so that will be everything from the food to the to the straw man to the financial system to the separation of countries and boundaries and all of this that i will call you know the the first prison matrix that's the system that you're currently experiencing on as a human that's one subject the other subject is the other prison matrix which is what we've pretty much touched on in its own way funnily in this conversation which is our relationship to our thoughts our perception the very nature of reality the illusion of us coming to conclusive evidence or conclusive beliefs that this is this this is that i am a human being and i'm this religion so i've been told that you know we're trying to make sense of you being a conscious aware being having a human experience that's the other matrix and that's more fine-tuned that's a deeper one it's to do with the mind and thoughts and attachments to your mind and how you perceive how you relate to this world through your eyes given that what you see outside of your eyes everyone makes the natural assumption that that's outside of me yeah. that 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 tree over there is over there we've got the dualistic language that supports this in every language in the world you me up down black white so that's another topic and then there's the prison matrix on on the planet that we're looking at that we're all encapsulated enslaved within so i just wanted to point out and give a little bit of clarity to the two different matrices yeah. matrices if that helps anyone listening is that okay as an answer yeah it sounds good to me yeah absolutely yeah right so i think we'll just wrap it up then paul i'll just give out our contact details again if you want to email uh, me directly i'm on contact at escape the ma- the prison matrix.com that's contact at escape the prison matrix.com or if you're on uh, the new media uh, which is alternative to facebook which i suggest everyone gets on because facebook's just a nazi listening to all your calls that is seen s-e-e-n dot i-s if you go on there and you befriend alan stockdale or you search in the groups for escape the prison matrix that's my group I set up. You can message me directly on there too. Uh, so any of those mediums is fine to get any questions and I'll be happy to answer them if we can. All right, Paul. And for all those, yeah, and for all those out there wondering if how to contact me personally, so as Alan said, if you want to co- contact me, Paul Massey, personally as well, I'm at contact at escapethematrix.com <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course so alan will probably get the questions that may be directed to me and i'm sure he'll pass yeah. them on and i'll talk to him first about how's that absolutely brilliant mate absolutely brilliant right we'll wrap it up there then paul uh, i'll say good night to all the uh, listeners if there is any out there please hope there is uh, and we'll see you next time so thanks a lot bye 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 paul and if i if I can just take a big, uh, hang on, Alan, if I can okay. just give a big shout out to Alan Stockdale and thank you personally, Alan, for this first little run we've done. Um, I think it's been very, very formulative. Um, yep, a lot of doors have opened to where we're going to go now with this. And nine out of ten of those doors we haven't yet recognised, which would be fair to say, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. That sounds good. So we'll, uh, I'll speak to you soon, then, Paul. All right? Over now. Thanks, Alan. Bye-bye.